a few weeks ago, there was an article that was getting passed around kind of within the, you know, psychology community that a therapist wrote. It was a very short article and it was essentially a synopsis of a research study that had just come out. Right. Um, and the title of the article was the rise of the lonely single men, rise of lonely single men. Right. And so the article was a synopsis of a study that showed that 60% of the people on dating apps right now currently are men. Mm. And then what they did was they followed, um, they, they took a bunch of women, they like looked at their profiles, they compared kind of what they said they were looking for. Um, and it was pretty consistent across the board, right? So it was like EQ, communication, vulnerability, like all of these very like felt based, what I would say, feminine energetically feminine traits, right? Um, qualities. And then what they did was they took these women who went on first dates and then decided not to go on second dates. And they kind of asked them like, why? Right. And it was, became very apparent that it, because they felt pretty quickly that the men, because they were looking at hetero heterosexuals, um, did not have those qualities, right? They did not have EQ. They did not have communication skills first or second date, like it was early enough on where they could tell, but they hadn't gotten too far into the relationship. And so this, this research was showing that there is a skills gap and that's how mm -hmm. this therapist kind of defined it. And I thought that was a really interesting kind of black and white way of saying it, but I thought a way that was very like, yeah, here it is. It's, it's a skills gap, right? It's not to necessarily blame men. It's just to say that we've had a period where women, I think especially, have been very hungry and have been breaking down these norms and have been looking inward and doing this kind of quote unquote work. Um, and it's not at the same rate. Like men have not been doing it at the same rate. Right. And so now you have this skills gap where women have, again, high, maybe potentially higher EQ, more connection with self, like all of these things. So I brought this, this, um, I saw a lot of therapists mm -hmm. talking about it and I brought it to my partner, to John and, um, he got, he got like a little, like his heckles kind of went up. He got a little miffed about it. And I was like, listen, mm -hmm. I'm just saying the research. And I said, what I think is interesting too, is there was research that was done not that long ago that was talking about how the happiest subset, the ha happiest population right now, at least Western based is single women. Mm -hmm. And the least happiest base of people actually is like partner women. That's right. And so anyway, he got upset. He was like, so basically you're saying that like women don't need men and men need women. And I was like, well, first of all, I'm just saying research. <laughs> I'm not giving an opinion on it. I said, Second of all, I think it's really interesting that you're getting upset. Like he was very mm. like offended by it. Right. And I said, and third of all, like kind of, yeah. Like, and I'm not saying that from an emotional perspective. What I'm saying is that if you look at the history of partnerships, women did need men, right? We needed them to survive that black and white, right? Period. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that because we have societally, the way that we have, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like, I don't want to say created, but like the men that we are interacting with now, and this is not to say all men, clearly, I'm, I'm giving a generalization, um, still need women right? Like men live longer. This is another research point. Men live longer when they're partnered. Women actually live shorter when they're partnered. Like, because there's they're... very, they're taking care of other people, right? Like we because have actually they're harvesting. <laughs> yes. But we have socialized men to need women to actually take care care of them in a lot of ways, right? Not just the emotional ways, but even I look at generationally, right? I look at women who like, I mean, they pack their husband's lunch every day. And I'm not saying don't do that if that makes you happy. I actually like doing that. I show my love through like food, right? As an example. But just to give one kind of silly example, like I, I've seen people who are like my grandparents age, right? Where like the woman dies first and the man doesn't know what to do with himself. Like he doesn't know how to do laundry. He doesn't know where anything in the house is. He doesn't know, you know, and again, I'm simplifying yeah. what I, this idea of quote unquote needing the person. But what I think is happening, what we're seeing is not just as simple as like a skills gap. I think that kind of oversimplifies it. I think what we're seeing is like, bottom line, women don't quote unquote need men to survive anymore, which we should all be celebrating, by the way. And so they're not just getting into relationships because they need to, to survive. They're actually saying, no, I have these standards. I have these expectations. Are you going to add to my life? Are you going to make my life better? Because if you're not, I'm not interested because I'm happy. My life yeah. is great. 
Yeah. So I think we need, I, I think it's connected, I guess, is what I'm saying with your part of your conversation is like, I think this is all part of what we're witnessing happen in this idea of like the rise of the feminine, not necessarily women, but the feminine is like in there, all of us, in all of us, there is a, a desire, but also it's almost becoming survival based to start well, embracing some of these feminine qualities. Because if we look at that research and we were to say 60% of single men, right. Um, or, or people on dating apps are, are men. It's like, well, now it does become survival for yeah, men. And it, would, it, it would be one thing if these models that we had in the past were actually creating a lot of fulfillment in couples, right. but they're not, they're not. right. And, <laughs> and you said something that's really important, which is this is so much of the way that we're socialized. And it's not that men aren't completely capable of totally. the connection and the emotional intelligence and all those things, but like, girl, I say women all the time. I'm like, who's raising these men? Like we can't just point fingers at men and say, fuck men. It's all no. our fault. We're raising them. <laughs> like, hello, well, it's we not just that though. It's not even just that though. It's like we socialize little girls to connect mm -hmm. with one another. We socialize little boys to stop talking to one another. Don't share your feelings, be right. a man, right? And so like we've been practicing this for a lifetime, mm -hmm. what we're asking men to go, like, go fly a jet, brother. Like, yeah. and they're like, I don't know how to fly a jet. I don't know how to talk about my emotions. Like it's there, it's just the invitation. Like we talk about this mm -hmm. all the time. The minute we sit men down for couples work, they're like, woo, I've been waiting for this. but it's even individual to it. Right. I mean, I've said to yeah. you before, like my favorite clients are always like the men that come in that are hungry for this because it's just like, it's amazing. And, and so profound to witness the unfolding of, of a person who's never been given the space or the access or the language to suddenly get that space and that access and that language. And just to see the transformation, like, I mean, it's my favorite. <laughs> Yeah. The only thing I would, you know, not even take issue with in that study, but I would sort of like make an addendum to, it's not that women don't need men. It's just that the level of dissatisfaction, I think that women are feeling in relationships, they're just not willing to do when it's not like when I, what is that, that, uh, I can't remember that movie, that Spike Lee movie, but I can do bad all by myself. It's literally like, why are these women able to right. like go back to school, get a doctorate, raise the kid by myself, all of these things. Like if I'm going to be doing the majority of this anyway, then I'll just do it anyway. Especially if I'm not feeling authentic connection here. But I think it's well, so when I say that... need, I say need as in like, we actually did at one point need men to survive. And that particular need is not necessarily there anymore. And I think that actually was kind of the, um, maybe the misunderstanding or the disconnect, whatever you want to call it, that, that got John upset when he was like, Oh, so you're saying that men need women, women don't need men. And I was like, well, no, that actually is what I'm saying. And I'm not saying like, I don't emotionally need connection. Of course I do. Right. We mm -hmm. all do. I'm talking about need in the basic sense of survival. No, we no yeah. longer need them in that way. And we did for a very, very long, long time. And so that is actually a huge shift and a huge change that we can't dismiss, right? Like we can't look away from that. That is a big component to the how and the why of these relational changes is because, yeah, I do need you to step up because now to go back to what you were saying, like you need, I need you to add to me. I need you to give me this connection because otherwise like, I don't need you to eat. And, and, and it's from, from a desire within you to like, yes. like that is what partnership is. And if I think for so long, like what we've been calling partnership is an authentic partnership, right? right. Like we've talked about, um, fair play, right? Like this mm -hmm. film and book that are getting so much traction. And it's like the inner authority to me is that each person is dis is saying for themselves, what is a life that actually brings me fulfillment and how do I design mm -hmm. that? And we're in like such an amazing time and space to be alive because we're actually able to end like demanding that our lives are that, right? It's so funny. Um, so my ex-husband and I are like, our kid just went to kindergarten and, you know, it's fascinating as they get a little bit older, all of a sudden, like there's a lot that is like asked of parents, right? Mm. Like any of you with like older kiddos, you're like, Ooh, this is like another full-time job. But it's fascinating the extent to which all of the stuff comes to the mother 2022 mm -hmm. and all of the stuff still comes to the all mother. All the emails, I, all the phone calls. 
And I got to give like big up props to my ex-husband because he took it upon himself to send an email without even talking to me about it, CC'd me on it and was like, you know, Cairo's mom is a therapist. She's very often in sessions with her phone on do not disturb. Please put me as your first contact and reach out to me first. And I was like, brother, (laughs) like what? It was so beautiful, but it's Mm -hmm. like, there is no reason for society to be determining no. what roles need to be played. You know, like whoever is better at washing the laundry should be the person washing the laundry. You know, like I think there's so many ways that it's like this is the role in terms of gender that people should be playing. And it's like, like you said about making lunches, is that a role you want to play? If mm-hmm. not, how do we negotiate that? How do we have mm-hmm. conversations instead of looking to some externalized idea of what quote normal is, you know, I mean, how many times in couples therapy is someone saying, what is normal? Like how often should we be having sex? And I'm like, I'm sorry, is this somebody else's sex life other than yours? How often do you guys want to be having sex? Somebody out there is not determining what your sex life should be like, but that is how we've been operating for how long, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that that is, I mean, listen, this could get this would get a lot more existential, a lot bigger than this, this conversation when we talk about like, this is how we externalize so much. Like we could look to like, um, not to like bring it into politics, but like the person that was elected prior <laughs> to who we have right now. Um, you can say Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there was a lot of like, especially depth psychology studies done around being a society that has been longing and hungry for a a healthy masculine presence, right? A fatherhood Mm -hmm. presence, something that says safety and security and I've got you and all this. And so we externalize like this need to be parented. Like I need Mm -hmm. some kind of external security. And so somebody steps up who's actually very wounded masculine. And I would actually say also wounded feminine. Um, But it's like, we don't, first of all, we don't know the difference. Second of all, we're so hungry for somebody to just tell us what to do, tell us what to believe, tell us what to think, tell us what to say that we basically will wrap it all up in a bow and hand it to them and go, here you go. Cool. I choose you do it because you're saying you can, you should do it. And then we get ourselves into trouble. This is that like externalized knowing. Um, and we see it happen so frequently, like human beings. I do believe we do want, (laughs) I don't know if this is like a true innate thing, but there is something interesting around how often as humans, we want other people to tell us what to do, what is right, what is wrong, how do I, you know, um, because it happens obviously in therapy all the time. It happens in politics all the time. Um, that could be a whole other tangent, but I love but that there's a connection on that. But that's wounded masculine energy. That's the patriarchal structure of right. our society. That there and is that an is all not knowing. just, yeah. And that's to me, you know, and I will say Donald Trump, because I think that it's not I think a lot of times we we want it, and this is like those who were in opposition to Donald Trump want to say like, this is just crazy. This all began. No, it did not. This no. is very much the way that we have been structured as a society for so long. It's been coming and, for a long time. <laughs> yeah. And I think yeah. what we talked about as depth psychologists was like, he was a demonstration of our collective shadow. And a lot of times when we are attempting to heal what has been out of alignment. The demonstration of it has to be so big that we're finally like, whoa, right? But I quite often am like things that he would say like, well, everybody's saying like, who are these everybody, right? But that's the same thing I was talking about with those psychotherapists earlier. Well, the research shows, well, what is the research? I'm curious Mm -hmm. to see a little bit more about that research. And when we dig a little deeper, is it true? Is it true of my life? Or is it that some externalized quote, expert has said, this is what's true of marriages. But like, to your point, that's, that's what we've been conditioned to do in a patriarchal structure is believe as long as someone outside of me says it's true, then I'm safe. Then mm-hmm. big bro- daddy's got me, right? Even if but, it feels wrong for me internally, I should even still Even if I'm feel- like dying yeah. inside. Yeah. Yeah. But like the rise of the feminine is scary because the feminine is that thing that isn't structured, that you mm-hmm. can't name, that you don't, like you have to trust in your own wisdom. You have to like go to the source within you and say, no, I trust myself. You know, there may not be a roadmap for where I'm going and what our family is going to look like, but I'm not going to look to anyone outside of me. I'm going to trust in my ability to know for sure for myself, even if everybody else in the world doesn't agree. Mm-hmm. I agree with, with my truth. Do you know what I mean? 